Yar. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ed Scar, and recently I got the Armada two-player starter set, and included in the set are eight of these tiny little resin ships. And I noticed in the starter set there were no instructions on how to build these, and so I thought I'd do a little video to show the process for anyone who's new to model making. As this is a starter set, there's a good chance that the people buying this box haven't played tabletop mini games before, and so might not have as much experience with these. And given that these are a little bit complex, and I'll go into details on exactly what I mean by that later, it would be good to have a brief description on how. Now I wanted to keep this separate from my main review, so if you would like me to actually talk about the game itself, please check the link in the description to my review video. But I wanted to address the kind of model making aspect of this box separately, because there's quite a few things to go into. None of it is particularly difficult, but there's just a lot of steps involved. And for this video I have specifically picked out the Orc Hammerfist and the Basilian, but Basilian, but Baras, human Elohi ship. As these are resin cast parts, you will usually find that there is mold release on the surface. Mold release being a sort of grease that helps the parts come out of the mold. There's also uh, dust and flakes of resin that you would need to clean away as well, and the process itself is pretty simple. I've just got a pot of warm water and some washing up liquid and an old toothbrush to give them a quick scrub over and then another pot of clean water to rinse them off and then leaving them out to dry. You may notice that some of the long spindly bits like the masts and some of the figureheads come out of the mold slightly bent. A one way to help with that is to warm them up in warm water and then very gently bend them back and given we've got the warm water out for doing the washing stage we may as well combine those steps and do it all together. Just be sure to be very gentle when bending these parts as they are quite fragile and if you bend them too far or too fast then they will shatter. The next step is to separate out all of the parts of the ship you're going to build. Unfortunately with the starter set I got all of the parts were mixed into bags together rather than being separated by ship class. And this may seem like a daunting task at first but I'll show you exactly which parts go with the two ships that I'm going to be painting in this video. In the starter set there are two of the Basellian Eloi class so look through the main holes to find two that look the same and to confirm that Eloi will have this flame effect at the front. And on this sprue marked E3 we can see the figurehead which also has very similar flame effects moulded into it. And if we hold them in the right way they'll fit together. So as this sprue was marked with an E, in this case E3, we can find E2 and E1 as well as the hull and we have the complete ship. The Orc Hammerhead class has far more parts, but we go about it in the very similar way. Similarly to the Elohi, we have two Hammerhead class ships in the starter box. And so we find two of the hulls that look a bit rough and ready with extra planking in places, signifying the Orc build style, and we take one of those pairs to be our ship today. To find the prow piece, we'll go to the sprue marked HF4, or Hammer Fist 4, and that has the mounting for the hammer fist rotating piece that gives the ship its name. And then we can find all of the other sprues with HF written on them. Two and three are weapon mounts, four is the masts, and five and six are the sails. However, we also need one part that isn't marked, and that's these tiny little cannons inside this little bag, and they will fit into a tiny little hole in the prow. So now that we've got the parts set out for the ships we want to make, we can start cutting the pieces away from the sprues. To do this, use a very sharp knife or some clippers and a board that you don't mind getting cut to ribbons because it's going to get damaged in this process, rather a scrap wooden board than your thumbs, and simply cut away the sprue pieces. Now you will notice that I keep some of the sprue pieces on the sails. The only reason I do that is so that I have something to hold on to when painting. You will also notice later on when I get to painting these parts that I don't actually hold them by the sprue and just stick my fingers all over it. Uh, this is not a necessary step, so you can do this or not as you prefer. You may find some faults or miscasts in some of the pieces. In this case, the side of this little window has broken away. I think this is mainly because Mantic Games are trying to make details that are 
too small for their manufacturing process. And so when they succeed, they look really, really nice, but when they fail, they fail and are broken. In this case, I simply cut away that piece and moved on, as it won't really be noticeable when the whole thing is painted. Now let's glue these models together, and this time I'm going to start with the Orc ship. Previously, we've identified which part is the prow for the hammerhead, and so we're going to test fit it with no glue just to make sure that it does fit. You might need to shave a little bit extra of the sprue away to make sure it fits nice and cleanly with all of the edges matching up. Now in this case I'm just using cheap simple super glue, which my regular viewers will know that I don't like, however for resin models it's pretty much the best glue to use in this case. Once the main prow piece is in place I'm going to glue on the second fist for the rotating piece at the front. Again, dry fit first because I had to cut away some uh, flashing that was inside the attachment hole. We then have the gun decks, and each gun deck has two planks in the middle, one of which is angled and the other one has two little dots on it. The angled side points forwards and the smaller plank with the two dots goes to the back. That should let you put the port and the starboard gun decks in the right place. However, if you do put them in the wrong place or even upside down, once they're painted, it doesn't make that much of a difference. We also have a smaller gun port to the aft of the ship. And these don't appear to be mirrored. There isn't a port side and a starboard side, they're, they're the same, so they can go on either side. And next we have the sails, and you'll notice that one of the masts has two pegs at the top and one peg at the bottom. Correspondingly, one of the sections of sails has two holes at the top and one at the bottom, and so they glue together in that orientation. We simply dab a little bit of super glue on each of the pegs or the holes, press the mast and the sails together, and hold them in place for a few seconds to make sure that they fully glue to our thumbs. They're not supposed to glue to our thumbs, that just seems to be what always happens with super glue. The other sail has one dot at the top and bottom, and glues together in very much the same way otherwise. And let's not forget the little cannon at the front of the hammer fist. I found a significant part of this piece was sprue and had to be cut away. Unfortunately it's a very small part and hard for me to get a photograph of, but if you cut little by little you can test fit it until it's poking out just the right amount. For the alloy there's much less gluing to be done. I'll test fit and then glue on the prow section with the figurehead. And then one of the main sections of sails has two holes in it, and the smaller section of sails has two pegs at the front that glue into that. So again, test fit, and then we'll glue them in place. As I mentioned, I'm keeping my sails separate so that it's easier to paint, so that's all of the gluing I'll do at this stage. Now we move on to priming, and I'm using a spray can primer, grey for the alloy and black for the orc hammer fist. The exact colour you use doesn't really matter, in fact if you can find a decent brown spray paint you can actually get ahead on the wood. But you only really need a thin coat, you don't actually need a complete coat of primer, it needs to be thin, that's more important. The thicker you put it on, the more details you're going to lose. It's not easy to see the grey primer on the alloy, as the resin underneath is grey, it's far clearer on the hammer fist. Where, as you see, little bits of grey are still visible here, and this is the correct amount of spray primer you should use, not a heavy coat that clogs all of the details. And now we can finally get to actually painting these models, and I'll start again with the hammer fist. And I could go on for days and days about the different aspects of painting and all the rest of it, it is, after all, a hobby that I'm very interested in, but for someone who's new, none of that is really important. Just get started and get paint on the model. And the first paint that I'm using here is a dark brown to coat the wood of the hull and on the masts as well. And I'm just trying to get a thin and consistent coat of paint over all of the wood and over quite a bit of the metalwork as well, because I'll be painting over that so it doesn't matter if I'm a little bit messy. Next I start putting layers of red on the sails and also on the kind of canopy of the poop deck. The pigments in red paint are notorious for being not great. My one is an older red paint so it suffers from this, but it just means you have to put a couple of extra layers on. 
Next I'm going to do the metal work, like I said, and pick out all of the metal contraptions, the metal swing arms, and the metal bracings in between some of the planks in the hull. Next I'm going to use a black wash, which just means a heavily watered down black paint, because that will then seep into the recesses and make them look dark, like they're shadowed, but leave the upper surfaces alone in the various colours that I've painted it. And after that I'll pick out some of the extra details in metal, uh, the cannon barrels and the highest surfaces of the hammer fist mechanism, just to make sure that the bright edges look like they're glinting in the light. Similarly on the sails I made sure that the highest points were the brightest red, but I also picked out the uh, axe logo in black, just to make the edges of that nice and neat. All in all this ship took me just over an hour to paint. And now for the Basellian ship, which I wanted to paint in very similar, but slightly different way. And I started by painting the entire ship in this tan colour, tan being just a light brown. Because I knew that tan would be a very good base colour for each of the sections of the ship. It's a good colour for the light wood of the hull and the masts. It's a good base coat for the gold. But it's also a good base coat for the white for the sails. After base coating the entire model in this tan colour, I went back with a brown wash this time. Again, just a very watered down paint so that it flows into the recesses and picks out the detail. And that was for all of the wood, the all of the planking of the hull and the masts as well. And then I started on the sails. And now I can explain why I was painting a white sail in a tan colour to begin with. There's a piece of advice that keeps going around the mini painting hobby, a very good piece of advice, that you never paint white with white paint. You always paint it as an off-white colour of some other colour, and in this case I've chosen that light brown. But in adding my second layer, I've mixed that tan light brown colour with some white to make it brighter. And then I'll come back later to do a third coat which has even more white but still just a little bit of that tan colour in it so that it doesn't completely wash out and look awful. I then picked out all of the sun symbols in the sails in blue and I mixed a little bit of a highlight with some of the spare white with some of the blue just to give some, uh, some of the raised edges a little bit of shine. I also painted some of the bits of the figurehead, the, mainly the flame sections in blue. And finally I picked out some things in gold. Now there's some inlay on the side of the ship and the cannons that I picked out in gold. In the official photography, the official paint job, there's a lot more gold on the ship than this, but I felt like just toning it down just a little bit because I really liked how that wood had come out with just a single coat of the tan with the brown wash over the top. And that's pretty much it. The Basellian Eloy is done. The last thing is to just glue the sails and the pieces together if you left them separate to help you paint them in the previous steps. As before, test fit to make sure that they're going to fit together correctly and then a little blob of super glue just to hold the parts in place. I'm also going to quickly glue them to the wooden bases. The super glue did take a few moments to bind the wood to the resin, so I did have just enough time to give it a little wiggle to make sure that the ship was correctly lined up, and then I left it aside for that to set. Well, yar and all right then, it seems we have two ships ready for the gaming table. One Elohi for the Basellian fleet and one Hammerhead for the Orc fleet. And I hope I've dispelled some of the questions and concerns that some of you may have about building the models from this set. As you see, it's not that difficult, but it is quite a long process. It takes a few hours for each of the ships, and with eight ships in total, that's quite a time investment. But I had so much fun building and painting these, and I think the next few I paint, I'm going to spend a lot longer doing. I don't want to say that I rushed through these to get them ready for the video, but I didn't go into quite as much depth as I would otherwise like to, and given how much fun I've had painting these, I'm definitely going to go ham on the next ones. 
But that's all I have to say for this video. If this is your first box that you've bought for the models, do let me know in the comment section below if this video was helpful, and of course feel free to ask any questions about the process if you need any more information. And from my regular viewers, you will know now that there is an extra secret link in the description that you can maybe throw me a few pennies if you wish to. Now for me, I need to go and read the rule book so that I can record the video that you've probably already seen, which is of course my review of the Armada game and the starter set. And there will be a link in the description to that video if you are interested there. But with all that being said, I'm Ed Scar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.